What's going on YouTube and welcome to Digital Perspective. I'm Khaled and in today's video, we're gonna actually gonna be going through Photoshop Sky Replacement Tool. Now, if you're not sure how to use this, fair enough, stay for this video and I'll show you exactly how to use this fantastic tool. Now, before we get started, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you get all of our updates whenever they do release. Now, let's just follow the intel and let's get on with this. What's up guys, I'm Khalid Mani, and like I said today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Photoshop uh, Sky Replacement Tool. Now, without further ado, let's just go into the computer and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you can see here, I've got this lovely image of this um, kind of a desert surfer. Um, and you can see that the sky image behind it is actually quite plain. Now, I want to replace this. Now, what I can do is inside, if I go to edit, inside of uh, the edit option you can see a sky replacement option now photoshop once i click that photoshop will give me this fantastic option just give it a second for photoshop to detect the actual layout so what photoshop has now done is it's tried to figure out where the sky is compared to where the object and the subjects are now by default you probably would have loaded up this guy or this guy now i'm going to select this guy because i quite like this guy and i want to replace it with this um, now, before we replace it, let's just go through some of the options here. Now, the shift edge, what that does is it actually decides on how much or how close to the edges it wants to get to figure out where the sky is compared to where the actual uh, objects are. So if I go all the way to minus 100, you can see it gives me like a massive um, soft just kind of soft box around the subject and the desert edge um, where the clouds are but you can also see that the other or the original cloud seeps through we don't want that now if i do the opposite and i go to plus 100 you see photoshop really tries hard to kind of get as close to the edges or what it thinks edges are um to and then replaces it with the sky now i'm going to leave it at zero however while i've done that the next option fade edge is basically how if i zoom in a little bit you see how the edges where photoshop tries to figure out where the edges is is how much of that edge it actually tries to kind of almost feather itself on right so i'm going to leave that back again to zero however one thing i've noticed is if you see here through his hands and his hat you see that photoshop has done as much as it could but it hasn't actually done a really good job about figuring out where the edges are now i can go ahead and adjust this by taking the mask tool here and then going ahead while holding the alt key you see my icon has changed from plus to minus and i'm going to go ahead and click on his hands here clicking while i'm holding i'm dragging and i'm just going through the edges just to let photoshop know that no i don't want you to go beyond this and i can just be a little bit rough with it i don't have to be absolutely clean with it it's just so that at least some of the more obvious areas are not you know, I and mean, the last thing you want is for his trousers to show some sky in front of it or his shirt to do the same thing, right? So what we're doing here is we're just making sure that the shirt and the trousers do not have any blue sky on them. Just go through that. Perfect. Again, you don't have to be very precise with it. You can be very rough with it. It's not a problem at all. And there we have it, right? So now that we've done that, the next thing is I need to go back and actually figure out where the original sun direction is coming from. Now, I know by, by looking at the guy's shadow that the sun's coming from his left hand side. Um, so obviously the sun has to be there. Now, if I look at the clouds, I think the clouds, let me let me go back to the move tool and move the clouds about. And if I look at some of the clouds here, I can tell, in fact, let me zoom into this here. Now I can tell that the clouds from here, that the sun's actually coming from the opposite direction because the clouds, um, the shadows and the clouds are on the, on the left hand side, whereas I want the sun to be on the left hand side. So I'm going to click my move tool, just push the, the sky back to where it was. And I'm going to go ahead and click the flip tool. And what the flip tool does is essentially just flips the the, the actual um, sky to the other side. Now I also want to add a little bit of brightness, just a tad bit of brightness, about 20 I would say. Yeah, I'd say about 20. And then I also want to add some tint of temperature on it. Now if I go to all the way to the blue side, you see it's done a blue tint to it. If I go to the yellow side, it's added an actual yellow tint to it. Now I actually want a yellow tint 
omelette because it's desert and ideally if you think about the actual scenario the desert sand would be reflecting back up to the guy which obviously is more of on the orange yellow side so that's why i want it to be uh, on that special i'm actually going to leave it at 100 i've done everything i'm happy with everything i click okay and then really that's it right so that's how you really kind of from a basic offset how you use the sky replacement tool um what you also can have is let me just see if i can get the other image out so what you can also do if i go to the second image this is where we can try different types of clouds right so i'm gonna do the same thing click edit sky replacement let photoshop do its thing for a second once it's done that, I'm gonna go ahead and select a different cloud. This time, I wanna select these slightly more thicker clouds, right? Now, again, figure out where the direction of the clouds are coming from, or the, or the lights, I should say. So the sun is coming from the right-hand side, and the image, if you look at it, the sun is on the right-hand side as well. So we're not gonna do any change. We're not gonna flip this, right? However, one thing we are going to do is maybe increase the brightness up a little bit because what you can see here is you can see this image is slightly washed out and it's actually quite a bright day and the sun's probably kind of just above just before it's um peak so we're going to increase the temperature to about 30 i'd say yeah uh, again we're not going to flip it i'm going to click ok now i'm happy with the way that looks i just need to do one last thing i think personally is that this image is slightly washed out Whereas uh, the clouds that we've just inserted is more quite, it's quite saturated, right? It's, it's got quite a bit of color to it. So I'm gonna close the sky replacement group layer. I'm going to add a layer adjustment for hue and saturation. And then I'm gonna hit the, um, the actual clipping mask, right? So I'm gonna click on that. So it only affects the group where the, uh, the sky is. And then while that's selected, I'm just gonna go ahead and push up on the slider for saturation so that it slightly desaturates the image now the reason why i'm doing that is because i want this tone or this sort of as i said desaturation to match the sky's desaturation now if i turn this desaturation layer off look at that right so you want to make sure that it feels like it actually fits into the same image you don't want people to obviously know that oh clearly the sky has been replaced right so how about what if what if we take a look at our last image or what about if we actually replace the sky to something that's completely different now for the last two images we've actually done a a, a daytime shot replacement whereas this time i want to do a sunset replacement or a sunrise replacement so i'm going to go to edit again i'm going to go sky replacement and this time i want to select a sunset so i'm just going to photoshop do its thing and then i'm going to scroll down and all these presets come along with Photoshop, which is, you know, quite fantastic already. Now you see this one, I actually quite like this one. So you know what, let's, let's go for this one. Now instantly with this one, one thing I've noticed is that the sun direction is on the opposite side. So go ahead, hit flip, let's flip that, let's get that out of the way. And then the next thing is, I've noticed, is that it's more to do with the color balance of the image, right? So because this original image was a day shot and the sunset that we're bringing in isn't really a day shot, um, is that the sun or the sky actually has a bit of orange and a bit of kind of muted, you know, purplish kind of color into it. Now we have to make sure that the actual mountain has that color bounced off it, right? So I'm just gonna click OK on everything. So now the, the thing, the task that we wanna do, we don't wanna do anything to the sky, we wanna do stuff to the actual mountain itself. So I'm gonna close the sky replacement group. I'm gonna select the background layer and between the actual sky group layer and the background layer, I'm gonna add a color balance, right? And the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna up, I wanna slightly add more orange and slightly more you know, magenta to the actual um, mountain so that it feels like the light has essentially bounced off. So just to show you what I mean, Essentially what happens is if the sun is bouncing off the ground here and then light bounces off, which we obviously know it does, this entire area has to have, you know, the similar color to the sky. So that's what we're trying to achieve, right? So let's delete that layer. And then on the color balance, what we want to do is we want to add slightly more magenta. Right? We want to add slightly more yellow, I think not too much and we want to slightly add more red perfect right and i'm just gonna just, i'm just gonna hide the the actual color balance line you can instantly see the massive difference this does with just that small adjustment look at this 
right so hide that layer you can see it's a green tint the whole mountain has a really lovely green tint but when we put that on there instantly our image feels like it fits a little bit more right because obviously we understand the way light works therefore we have to adjust everything that we need to do um as such right so just practice with your uh, sky replacements and depending on what sky you actually select make sure that you actually you know think about the rest of the image uh, and the rest of the items or objects inside that image to make sure that everything actually works and the way it's supposed to be um, but yeah so this is how to use the sky photoshop or the, the the sky replacement tool inside of photoshop and i hope you've enjoyed it but if you did please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that notification bell on and leave a comment let us know what you think let us know if you enjoyed it maybe there's a few ways that you would have done something differently i'd love to know what you think and yeah be sure to check out some of our other videos in the end cards i'm sure you'd you know be able to enjoy some of those and until the next time i'm khaled and i'll see you then Peace.